I showed this on a uh, video before. Um, it was a pretty popular video because I showed the, uh, the roller inductor in action. Um, it uh, was built by a, a local ham and he used what he had and it was a bit, um, well, he used what he had. So I thought I'd upgrade it. Um, so a couple of things that wanted, I wanted to upgrade was the uh, tuning capacitor. The, the roller inductor is great. It's old military stuff. The, uh, the uh, tuning capacitor, it's an L, L, L network. Uh, tuning capacitor was just out of, an old, uh, out of an old AM radio. And so it was just, uh, just an old guy. And uh, it has very, very narrow uh, spacing between the... Um, uh, between the plates and uh, um, if you take a look at uh, other you know protection made versions of antenna tuners and stuff they won't they won't use these they'll use a, uh, a wider spacing between the uh, contact for higher voltages and stuff so on eBay I found uh, I found this thing which is a nice Hammerland brand new old stock uh, Hammerland uh, uh, made in the USA, uh, manufacturing, so I'm reading it. Uh, it's a 200, uh, 200 picofarad, uh, uh, tuning capacitor. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's really nice. So anyway, so let me, uh, uh, let me show you another thing. So that's going to go here. I'll show you the insides in a little bit. Uh, that's going to go here. And then it has this really cool meter. Uh, people have commented on that. I think I have the only meter in the world. <laughs> I have never seen another one of these. Uh, it is a Weston Model 888. Uh, anyway, it's cool because it's uh, uh, power in this direction and, and, and uh, in, uh, increasing badness uh, in, of SWR in this direction. So it's actually this is reflected power. So this is forward power, this is reflected power, and then the SW curves, you, know, you want to stay in that green section where the two lines cross. And, um, and that would be below uh, SWR 1.5. Okay. So if you know the forward power, you know the uh, reflected power, then it's the ratio of those two that gives you the SWR. Uh, so this needs to be driven somehow. It needs to have some mechanism to measure forward power and some mechanism to measure reflected power. And so he used, uh, uh, he used one of these because they're ubiquitous. They're everywhere. And this is an old uh, little, these were usually sold to CB radio operators as a uh, power meter uh, thing. It had a, used to have a meter on it here, which is gone now. Uh, so he... He, uh, he put this inside and, and hacked into it. So what is this thing? Well, it is a, a coupler. Uh, there is a, a single uh, rod that goes from connector to connector. That's that middle connect connector, uh, middle rod. And then these two side rods uh, couple power. And there's a couple diodes to measure the peaks and stuff. So one of them measures the power in that direction and one of them measures the power in that direction. And that's the way, it, that's the way it's done. But this thing's a bit too crude for my tests. <laughs> so I've ordered a, uh, a fancy one. That's a, a dual, a dual toroid version. It hasn't come in the mail yet, but I'll be putting that in. Anyway, so let me, um, let me put the camera on top here so you can see what's going on. So here's that big roller inductor, and um, I've taken the, like I said, I've taken this, uh, I've taken this out, and it needs to be isolated from the chassis. Uh, both sides of this capacitor are floating, and so it needs to have some insulator. Uh, you need to mechanically mount it, but you also need to insulate it. So uh, it had a really strange material to do that, and uh, uh, I'm going to do it with this. Uh, with this piece of, uh, what this is, is this Teflon or ABS or something? Anyway, some kind of, some type of plastic. I'm going to use that as, as an insulator. And the uh, uh, capacitor will, will go in here. And then I'll need to uh, 
build a little fixture here to hold to hold the capacitor. So I need to machine that. And uh, then these will go together so there'll be a plate that goes between these two. I think I need about a half inch spacing between these two to, to make it to the right level. And uh, I'll, build, I'll build a couple of standoffs for this thing and mount to this piece of plastic. And then the piece of plastic will mount to the bottom so it'll, it'll be, nice and, be nice and insulated. So I'll do that. And then I'll put that other uh, SWR uh, circuitry uh, back over here. And let's see, what else do I need to do? Replace the connectors, a couple of PL 259s over there. Um, yeah. Anyway, so that's a work in, pro in, work in progress. I think today what I'm going to do is make the standoffs and uh, mount this, uh, mount this uh, nice, uh, nice capacitor in there. So should be good. I think 200, I think 200 will be okay. If it's not, I can always have a another capacitor that I can switch in series and have a high-low switch or something, but I think uh, I think this will be enough. So I've uh, mounted this little uh, capacitor on a plate, um, and I want to mount that plate, so I've, I've stuck it out so I can put two screws. The, unfortunately, the screws that mounted this were on the bottom side, and I want to mount it from the top side, put this plate on, so I'm going to mount it. I'm going to mount it in like this. You understand what's going on here? I'm going to take this insulator. I'm going to mount this to that, and then I'll put screws in from the bottom to hold it onto the bottom here. And I need to get it to the right, uh, the right height. And it isn't right now. You can see that it's uh, it's too low. I've showed this before, but I don't think I can show it enough because I just love these things. Um, and that is these. Um, uh, they're uh, slight, what do they call these things? Uh, oh man, what, are these th what do they call these things? Height, uh, 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 adjustable parallels, I think that's what they call them, adjustable parallels. And so they are two, uh, two things, oh, the gardeners here are great, noise on there. So there's a sliding here and you can, you can make it at different, uh, different thicknesses by sliding this, sliding this in and out. So, I found uh, I found the smaller one here, and I think that's going to be good. So I'm going to I'm going to mount it down there, and then I'm going to set this on top of it, and then I'm going to see if this uh, if this mates up with the. Uh, so we're too, oops, I'm too low there. Let me tighten tighten this so I don't I don't lose its setting quite so easily. There's a little bit of a little bit of friction there. Okay, and then let me. Uh, See if that's the right height. And that is a little, a little low. I'll move it up some more. Sorry about the leaf blower. Huh. All right. Oh, that's just about right. That's just about perfect. All right. So what I need to do is I need to make a little spacer block that thick. And so let me uh, let me lock this down. It's got a little screw on it, so you can lock this down. I always measure twice, cut once, and put this on here again. And that is perfect. That is the perfect height. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some thickness to the bottom of this, either standoffs or a little machine plate. I'll probably just make a little machine plate that goes on there. I'll I'll screw that onto here, and then this will screw onto that, and it should be should be ready to go. So yeah, off to the, uh, uh, get some calipers out and measure this. I need something about uh, 30.35 or uh, right about nine millimeters. All right, uh, so here's my machining. Very good quality, look at that. I've got a nice uh, facing, uh, uh, facing end mill. Like a, I've got a couple sizes, but I'm, I use my two inch uh, facing end mill and it cuts very, very clean. So on aluminum, it's really nice. And uh, it is exactly the thickness of my uh, my gauge here, which is great. So it should work. So this, so the way this is gonna work is that this this piece will, uh, will uh, mount to this piece. Okay, so there'll be two screws that hold, that hold this on. But this first will mount on this. So there'll be some counterboard screws 
that will hold it onto this piece. And then this will, uh, there'll be some tapped holes in this one, and that'll go on. And then that should slide right into there, and it does, perfect fit, look at that. And then the, uh, and then the uh, thing can rotate it, great. All right, so next to do is to uh, lay out some holes and uh, tap some things. There'll be some tap screws from the bottom too, so I can hold the plastic into the, uh, into the bottom of the chassis, so. Yeah, that'll work out good. All right. All right, I was about to do this. In, um, if you haven't been around a machine shop, uh, you might not know what these are or uh, have never seen these before. Uh, these are counter bores. And so I've got a big one out here so you can kind of see kind of see what it does. Now let me, show, let me briefly describe what it does first and then we'll, I'll show you how it's made. So you have a hole and you want to put a screw in there, but you want the screw to be recessed from the top. So a lot of times you'll go in here and you'll drill one hole and then you, you'll you pick a bigger drill and you'll drill that. But the bottom of the hole won't be flat. It'll be it'll be like 135 degrees or 118 degrees or whatever your uh, drill of your um, grind of your drill is. And you really want a, a flat bottom. So what you want is you want something that looks like this. OK, and then when your screw finally goes in here, OK, your screw is going to be like this then it'll be flush and it'll have a nice flat surface to sit on. Um, so, so yeah, so this is a counter bore. And so this is uh, made to do that. Uh, this part here is made to be the size of the hole that's through. First you drill a hole through, and then when this goes in, it follows that hole, and then this part cuts the, uh, cuts the relief. And so it's self-centering and it, and, it, and it works great. Um, I don't have many uses for these things. Um, but when I do, they're great. This is for a uh, this is for a half inch screw, and uh, this one is for a, an eight, a number eight screw, which is going to, what I'm going to use. And uh, the reason that I, I like it also, I don't think it's going to grab into my plastic. I want to I want to uh, counter bore the plastic, and because this doesn't have a spiral on it, this does have a spiral. So this this would probably grab the uh, grab the plastic, but this one has straight walled flutes, so I think it's going to work out. Uh, Got just great. So anyway, I thought uh, maybe you uh, maybe you haven't seen these before, and uh, just a heads up. All right, I have my counter bores in, so hopefully, hopefully this is all fit together now. So the counter bore, counter bore goes for that screw there, and you can see it just just sticks out the bottom and grabs. Uh, so let me get a. Uh, these are hex head. Let me let me find find the right. Size Allen wrench. I think that one's right. Yep. All right. So that will go through there. And then this will go through here. And Okay, that was dumb. That wasn't wasn't the right way around. It wasn't. <laughs> Forgot this plate. So this plate goes in there first. So these screw onto here. All right, that's the way it works. These go down. God, I can't even remember my own design. I went and had lunch, and now I'm all confused. Where's my screwdriver? There we go. Went and had lunch. And let's see, this one goes here. All right. There we go. That goes on there. And then this, this goes on here like, like a so. Yeah, that's better. Thought something was missing. All right. There we go. Does that look better? If you've been following along? <laughs> yeah, that's better. That's at the right height now. Um, I needed that spacer block in there. So, very nice. That will slide in here. And 
fit just right. So now they will come up and they will mate and go in and yeah, perfect. I like it.